Hello, more on to problem 1c. So, let's get started. So 1c, we're asked to show another set of quality, where, and let me, like we did before, let me, um, this time I'm going to um, color code them for, for later. But we're asked to show a set of quality, and we're going to, we're going to do it the same way we did last time, where we're going to show that the left side is a subset of the right side of the equal sign, and vice versa, that the right side is, um, a subset of the left side of the equal sign. So we're gonna we want to show that a union B intersect C is a subset of D union the set containing zero. That's step one. And step two is we want to show that um, D union the set containing zero, D union the set containing zero is a subset of a union B intersect C. All right, so let's start with one, but, but before we actually we start with one, let me draw a quick sketch of what this might look like on the number line just to give us some inspiration going forward. So our pink is A. Oh, let me leave it like this. One, three, uh, so we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, oh, we'll run out of room there a little bit, 4, okay, and A is in pink, so it goes from negative 2 to 0 inclusive, B is in yellow, and it goes from 2 to 4, not inclusive, Um, and C is from 0 to 3, inclusive. Okay, so, um, and this kind of gives us, like, a general sense of why this might be true. We can already start to see this, this right side of the equal sign appearing from how we drew out A, B, and C here, or sets A, B, and C on the number line. Um, and so that will kind of help us out going forward. So, um... Let's get started with how we're going to show this. So I actually want to show this by a contradiction for fun here. So, um, and also because it's helpful to, it might be helpful to see um, this sort of proof early on. So we're first going to show that D, uh, A union B intersect C is a subset of, or is contained in, D union the second contains zero. And that's the same as saying, that's the same as saying, if any arbitrary x is in A union B, any arbitrary x, or rather, let me say it like this, if x is in A union B intersect C, then that implies that x is in D union the set containing zero. And so since we're, let's, since this is an implicate, uh, since this is, um, this is the same as saying this, that is since saying that if x is in A union B intersect C implies x is in D union, the set containing zero, is the same as showing that the left is the subset of the right, then we're going to say, okay, so this shall let, suppose that x is in A union B, and if we can show that x since it's, if we can show that this x that's in, that we're letting be an A union B intersect C, must also be an x, or in D union the set containing zero, then we're done with, uh, we're, we're, the, we're done with step one. So, but by, sh to show that this x must be in D union the set containing zero, we're going to argue by contradiction. So we're going to say, okay, suppose x is not in D union zero. And our goal here is to show that this, if we suppose that X isn't in D union, um, the set containing zero, then it leads to a contradiction. And if it leads to a contradiction, then it must be that this can't be true. That is, if X not being in D union, the set containing zero, leads to a logical contradiction, then it must be that X has to be in uh, D union, the set containing zero. So if x is not in D union, the set containing zero, then x is 
greater than or equal to, oh, excuse me, x is less than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 2, or less than or equal to 2, or x is strictly greater than 3, and x is not, in, or rather it's not in the second chain is 0, which means that it's not equal to 0. So, let's, let's take this first option. Let's suppose that, and this is clear why, why it must be an or here, because you can't have an x that's less than or equal to 2 and an x that's greater, strictly greater than 3 simultaneously. That would be absurd. So, let's take this first option. If x is strictly, or if x is greater, less than or equal to 2, let me say that again. If x is less than or equal to 2, and x is equal to, or I'm sorry, not equal to 0, then we're going to try to show that that leads to a contradiction, given that x must also be an A union B intersect C. So if x is less than or equal to 2, and x is not equal to 0, then if x is less than or equal to 2, then it can't be in B, Thus, it must be an A since we're saying that X is in A union B intersect C. So since A, since X is in A union B intersect C, it must be, and since X is less than or equal to 2, then it can't possibly be in B because B is from 2 to 4 not inclusive. So X must be in A. And remember, we gotta, it must be always the case that X is not equal to 0 if x is not in D union of the second dating zero. So, if x is in A and x is not equal to zero, then x is in negative from negative, in the set from negative two, including negative two, to zero, not including zero. But, let's look at what this does. If x is in negative 2 to 0, not including 0 and including negative 2, then x is not in C. Because in order for x to be in C, it has to be from 0 to 3, including 0. But x is not even, x doesn't include 0, and it goes down to negative 2, so it can't possibly be in C. So this implies that x is not in C. And if x is not in C, then that implies that x is not an A union B intersect C. Because in order for X to be an A union B intersect C, then it must be both an A union B and it must be in C. And by the same, by similar reasoning, let's suppose now since we've already checked off this, we've already checked off that as to be absurd, this matched with this, uh, or that is to say, We've already shown that if x is less than or equal to 2 and x is not equal to 0, then that leads to a contradiction. All that we have to show now is if x is strictly greater than 3 and x is not equal to 0, then that also leads to a contradiction. But this is easy. This is much easier because if x is strictly greater than 3, then x can't possibly be in C. And so if it's not, so let me say it like this. If x, let me write a little line here to separate things. If x is strictly greater than 3, and x is not equal to 0, then that implies that x is not in C, which implies that x is not in A union B intersect C. But look at this. We, we said before that x, we're, we're supposing, like uh, the hypothesis of our argument is that x is in A union B intersect C, or not the hypothesis, rather the, what, what we're saying is true, the given of our argument is that x is in A union B intersect C. So, this, leads, this is also a contradiction. So, thus, both of these together, both of these contradictions that we just derived together, imply that x must be in D union uh, the set containing 0. In other words, x, if x weren't in D union intersect 0, it would lead to a contradiction. All right, and going on with part two, for part two, if w what here we want to show that D union the set containing zero, let me switch colors here actually. I'm gonna switch to blue, D 
A union the set containing zero is a subset of or is contained in A union B intersect C. So, and, and like before, this is the same as showing that if x is in D union the set containing zero, then that implies that x is also in A union B intersect C. Okay, so if if x is in D union the set containing zero, then x is such that it's less than or equal to three and strictly greater than two, or x is equal to zero. So let's take the first case. So x could either be like this, where it's strictly greater than two and less than or equal to three, or x could be zero. Well, let's knock off the easy case first. If x is equal to zero, then it's immediately true that x is in C and x is in A, which means it must be also in A union B. Um, let me write this down real quick, actually. For, for any general case, let's say x is in the big set x for any general set x, then x must also be in x union y. And this is sort of easy to true, but I think it's worth proving yourself rigorously in your, on your own time. But, so if x is equal to zero, so if x is equal to zero, x is in C, and x is in A, which implies that x is in C, and x is in A union B, which implies that x is in C intersect A union B. Okay, so that's the first, that's the first um, step is to, to suppose that x equals zero, or x could be um, less than or equal to three and strictly greater than two. And let me do that up here. I'm kind of running out of room here. I'm gonna erase this number nine s because I don't think we need it as much anymore. We've already been inspired by it. Okay, so if x is, if x is less than or equal to three, I can get myself enough room again, and strictly greater than two, then x is in C, and that's easy to see because, <laughs> no pun intended, because if x is less than or equal to three then and strictly greater than two, then it must be less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to zero, so that's true. And if x is strictly greater than two and less than or equal to three, then x must also be in B because anything that's strictly greater than two must be strictly greater than two, as we see here, and anything that's less than or equal to three must be strictly less than four. So x is in B, which implies that x is in C and x is in A union B, since if x is in B, then x must be in A or B. Um, um, and then since, which implies that x is in C intersect A union B. And we're done.